I think the Niners are being a little shady with how they're moving Brandon Ayuk. Oh. I, the reason I wanted to bring this up as a topic is, is because they definitely... Th this is where I got the idea that it seems like they're on a one-year uh, movement right now. Because when they talked about Brandon Ayuk, it was like, hey, we're not sure. You know, We'll figure out the fifth-year option after the draft. And we'll... we'll um, we think he can help us this year. It was the verbiage. So, okay, does that mean you're going to move him next year? And and a lot of people really looked into that, which gave me the thought that they're clearly going year by year, which is fine. However, I do want to say, because I didn't know the answer to this, I looked at the fifth-year options of the players they drafted. I didn't look into, like, Buckner or those guys. But the players that they drafted, um, McGlinchey, they picked up his fifth-year option on May 1st, from what I found and Nick Bosa on April 25th, which was right before the draft. But on both of them, it was either right before or right after the draft. So I don't necessarily think that they're moving as strangely as people want to make it seem. With McGlinchey, they were always going to pick it up during that time, and they just waited till after the draft. Maybe that's all they're doing with Brandon Ayuk, and it's not that big of a deal. But I think a lot of people are taking it as, hey, he might get traded on draft night, which... I didn't necessarily take it that way, Grant. That's good to know. Because, I mean, on the one hand, he said Brock's going to be, I mean, Brandon's going to be on this team this year and playing a big part of it. The other hand, it's like, well, we're going to talk to him about that fifth-year option. It's like, what? What does that mean? Why would you Why would you do that? I just don't understand why you would even say that. That was, this just seemed highly irregular. And the explanations don't make sense. Why, why did he say that? Why haven't they picked it up? What are you waiting for? Yeah. Him? Well, Why they've also got to make a decision on Kinlaw, and you probably are going to do those the same day. So it's like, okay, I mean, you're going to tell you're Kinlaw me they he's haven't not made their his mind up, up on either one. Okay, so it's it's out of courtesy. Courtesy. I don't know. It's the only thing I can think of. Courtesy. Kinlaw's a okay. scary man. You know this. <laughs> hey, hey, absolutely. Uh, I understand. Um, okay, so so we're going with the courtesy theory. Possible. So if it's not a courtesy, though, to me, what I'm thinking is he probably won't get traded. But if you're thinking there's a possibility you'll trade him next year, well, then you have to at least consider trading him this year for someone who can make the team better. It's not a wide receiver. There is no rookie wide receiver you could get that would be better than this guy. I think I would take him. But if you could get a starting right tackle, if you get Darnell Wright or someone else at the end of round one, I don't know. It's something the Niners at least have to talk about, right? Yeah, but... Also, don't you think if there was a team that was interested in Brandon Ayuk and giving a first-round pick that they would also pick up the fifth-year option? So when you have somebody in a fifth-year option and you trade them, it is zero cap hit to you. The whole amount of that money is owed to them and guaranteed, but it is a zero cap hit when you trade it. So picking up the fifth-year option now doesn't prevent you from trading. All you're doing is doing what the next team would do anyways if you are truly open to trading him. No team's going to give up a first round and then not pick right. up that fifth year option. It's just not going to yeah. happen. I, I, and again, I just don't understand why the Niners haven't picked it up yet. He's yeah, good. He deserves it. Pick that up day one. I mean, how, how could Javon Kinlaw be upset with that? I mean, look at what Brandon Ayuk has accomplished. For he hasn't sure. missed a game in two years. Like everyone sees this coming. It's it's a foregone conclusion. And I think um, it's it has nothing to do with Javon Kinlaw other than the fact that they were in the same draft class. So I, I I just don't get it. And I think it's at least, it's fair to wonder why they haven't done it yet. And it's intriguing to look at the pattern from the past. I don't think they're going to trade him. But if the Giants come up at pick 25, and let, let me let me get the names. Let me get the, let me get the names of the top rated um, offensive tackles that could be there at that spot. Just so we have some names to keep in mind. If Broderick Jones, Darnell Wright, or Anton Harrison are available at 25. I'm curious to see what happens. That's it. Mm. I'm curious to see what happens. They all could be gone. Yeah, or maybe the Niners only like one be. of them or none of them. Who knows? Yeah. I and, yeah. and like I said, I had a similar thought at first. And I'm like, well, hold on. Let me actually look at when these fifth years were picked up. And the two players that you drafted that you picked up their fifth years, one was just before the draft. Okay. But one was right after the draft. So it's like, is it really that strange? That, it would be like, oh man, they might trade Nick Bosa because they haven't restructured his deal yet. It's like, well, hold on a second. They, yeah. they always wait until August to do Fair these enough. things. So Fair it's enough. not 
that far out of the realm of possibility. Good point. Plumbing God 42. This is the plumbing God. It says 49ers need Jack need Lamar Jackson. Seattle has two first. Eagle has two first. Detroit has two first. They need a dynamic game-changing player to stay ahead. I just totally agree. I don't understand how the Niners wanted Deshaun and they, they, they wanted Trey thinking he could be Deshaun and then Lamar Jackson's available and they're like, you know what? We're just going to stick with our plucky seventh round pick. Like, <laughs> you guys aren't serious. You guys aren't serious. Come on, Jed. They're not serious about having a, an elite quarterback. They may think they're serious about winning, but I don't think they understand that those two <laughs> correlate so much. I just keep coming back to the fact that John Lynch is a champion. He won one championship in his life, and he won it with Brad Johnson. So from his perspective, like there isn't this need to get the greatest quarterback in the world. You got to get a guy who fits into the team, who fits into the system, who's a cog. Like Brad Johnson was, he wasn't even a top 10 player on that Super Bowl winning Bucks team. He was just a little bit better than like Trent Dilfer and Sean King. That's all they needed. Yeah. Yeah. But the league has changed so much since then, in my opinion. And the Niners are like this. No, it hasn't. We're a throwback. We're super physical. We're going to play like it's 1999. It's like, okay, great. But you haven't won the championship, but it's cool that you play this way. But, <laughs> right. but, but you might want to just get with the times. And I don't know. But also, who won Super Bowls in 1999 or won a Super Bowl in 1999? An elite quarterback then, and too. An elite Crazy. quarterback, Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. Yeah. Jay Garza says, why we keep bragging about our roster and not getting the quarterback right? Does a team shoot right past like Seattle in 2013? That's my fear. Yeah, I mean, Seattle's actually a really good team. Like They have a lot going for them on offense. They just had a terrible defense last year. But they're rebuilding it. And now they got Bobby Wagner. They got Draymond Jones. They got the, the fifth pick in the draft. And So yeah, I, I would think they're not going to have a terrible defense this year, which is bad news for the Niner fans. Yeah. And and you and th- I think the Seattle in 2013 is a really good point because and we've talked about this before, Grant, with the 49ers around that time. You get these teams that that are in these proverbial windows, and you think it's going to last forever, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the bottom falls oh. out, and yeah. you get a mass exodus of players in San Francisco, or you Cam Chancellor isn't the same because of a neck injury and. You know, Earl Thomas is out of the league. Like, how the hell does that happen? He was just an all pro player. So there's so much that can happen. You really can't predict. Look at the Niners, right? Patrick Willis. Patrick Willis retires at 29. Justin Smith retires at like 33 or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Jay Garza says, my son, Plumbing God 42, and I are huge fans of both of you. Hey, okay. Thanks for your strong, honest thoughts. I appreciate it. That was cool.